Okay, and welcome to this Unreal tutorial. A um, bit of a diversion from Maya. Uh, what we're going to do with this is just um, an example of using Blueprint interfaces to create interaction or communication between different Blueprints. So we're going to be working from a Blueprint class for the player, Blueprint class for these objects, and then we're going to use a Blueprint interface um, to tie these together to create almost like a, a custom call. So basically we want to have, whenever we click on an object, it's just going to check if it has a special call, which then, if it has, it will trigger off an event within the Blueprint class. So let's just show you the example. So on here, I've just got this function so that when I go over these, just press F. What we'll just do is trigger off an animation within these. But we're using the same call from the player control to call um, an event in both of these objects separately and they will do their own individual things okay so let's just open a new project I'm going to open a first person I'm not using starter content let's just create the project okay here we are so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new folder just right click let's do a new folder and I'll call this Blueprints, I can spell. Okay. The first thing I will do is actually set up our Blueprint interface. So I'm just going to go on to Add New, go into Blueprints, and we're going to set up this Blueprint interface. Okay, let's call this Interact Me. So this is going to be our interaction. Let's just double click on this and this looks a bit different to a normal um, blueprint, a level blueprint or a blueprint class. Here we can't actually do anything in the window, can't touch this, but we can go in and we can name this function. So let's just click on this. So I'm going to call this hit me. Okay. Now just a little glitch, um, a little thing that I've just uh, found in a tutorial, I was trying to find this out for ages, banging my head against the wall. Uh, it doesn't seem to show up. Let me just show you this. Let me just compile and save this for a second. And let's just shut this down. So if we create our Blueprint class now, create an Active Blueprint class, uh, let's call this Box Move. I'm just going to double click on this. So to use this Blueprint Interact, or this Blueprint Interface uh, within here. <coughs> Excuse me. What we're going to do is go into our class settings and in this interface section, well, we've got no interfaces right now, we can add this in. So there we have our Interact Me. Just click on this. Now when we do that, it doesn't appear over here. It should actually appear over here in an interface um, panel. But it doesn't do that. So what we need to do, let me just compile and save that. I'm just going to move this and just dock this in. Just double click back on our Interact Me. Let's click on our function. We just need to create a dummy input and output for this. We don't have to put anything into this. We just need to do that. File and save. And now you can see that now we have this Hit Me interface in there. Okay. There seems to be a few glitches with this Blueprint interface and the newer versions of Unreal Engine. So let's go ahead and create our animation for um, this this blueprint class. So first of all, I'm going to add a component. I'm going to add a cube in there. With that, I'm just going to go into the event graph. Just highlight these and delete this off. And we're going to create some movement on this. So first thing I'm going to do is add a custom event. What we should be able to do, again, just a note about this, um, this interface here, if we right click, and I've seen this on other tutorials, we should be able to go hit me, hit me, and we should get an event uh, in here, but we're not, we're just getting a function, we're getting a function call, essentially. We're getting this message, interface call, we're getting this call function. We're not getting the event for this. So we have to do this a slightly different way. If I double click on this, we actually get our event in here now. So to call something within our event graph, we're going to call a custom event. So I'm going to create that custom event first. 
So if we go into the event graph, just right click, and let's just create a custom, add custom event. I'm going to say maybe uh, move box. Okay. Now let's trigger this off. So what we're going to actually do from this, we're going to uh, right click and we're going to create a timeline animation. So I'll just create, uh, type in add time, get this add timeline. Let's give this a name. Let's go back to our event graph. There you go. Let's call this anim box. I know it's a cube technically, but there you go. Let's wire this in. So from this, uh, we need to set the location of the cube. So I'm just going to right click and we're going to use a set relative location. So set relative location for our cube. Here we go. If you don't get that cube interface, uh, uh, that cube in there, what it can do, or reference as it is, uh, what it can do is just drag in our cube from here. I can just use a get on there to bring that cube reference in. Okay, but that's coming. Sometimes it doesn't seem to come in, but that time it did. So with this, we're going to type in, uh, we're going to drag in from our update pin to here, our direction into our new direction, but we've not actually got this location yet. So I'm just going to go into this. We need to get our location up. So we're going to add some animation to this. So I'm just going to double click on this. We're going to add a vector track. I'm going to switch off the X and Y so I can just work on the Z. And I'm going to just uh, shift click on the timeline twice to create two keys. So let's select the first key. Let's just set the time to zero, say. And our value will leave at zero. Click our second key. Uh, our animation length right now is five. I'll just use the maximum that we're at right now. Set that to five and let's set a value of say a hundred. Let's give this a name. So let's call this box lock for box location. And let's go back to our event graph. So now you can see we have this new value on here, a new parameter. So we're going to take our box location I'm going to drag this into the new location. Okay, so that is done. While we're in here, let's just go into our function call or our event call for this interface. And let's now just type in hit me. We've now got this call function for our custom event. So let's wire this in. Wire this down again compile and save. So that should all be working. All we need to do now is trigger this off from the player. So make sure I compile and save that. Uh, let's go to our edit window. Let's go to our blueprints and we're going to open a blueprint class and open the first person character blueprint class. Just move to the bottom of here so we can add a new event on. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to trigger this from uh, key press, but we're actually going to be checking in front of the player using a trace command what objects are in front of the player. So essentially, when he looks at an object, if um, you press a certain key, it's going to check that object and check whether check whether it has this blueprint interface attached to it. So let's right click. Let's just use a key event. So I'm going to use a key. Scroll up and uh, let's find out let's just use an F key just in case the E has been used generally in games it is an E to use use this for now so we're going to right click and we're going to use a trace command I'm going to use a single line by channel let's actually change the name it's now just line trace by channel let's drag this in so let's set that going, now pressed. We need to get our start and end. So we'll just right click, we're gonna get our world location of our camera. So get world location, first person camera there. 
we're going to use this. This is going to be our start value, so from where our player is. Then we need to find out where the player is looking. So if we just drag out from this first person camera, and we're going to use uh, get forward vector. Okay, we're going to extend this outwards. So I'm going to times this by a float value. So we're just going to drag out. If we just type in vector. I'm going to do a vector times float. I'm going to times it by say fifteen hundred. A bit of space and then what we need to do is we need to add this vector value to the vector value from the world location so again let's just drag out vector and let's do a vector plus vector here we go just to make this a bit neat I'm just going to alt click to break this connection and let's just drag this to the bottom one and let's come out of this value and into here so we're adding the value from our get world location and our new vector um, from our get forward vector and we can put this into the end now okay so from this we need to check if we are hitting anything so I'm just going to come out of here I'm going to do a branch so let's just click in the return value connect that up We also need to take out and get out um, what is in front of this trace event. So if we just use the out hit, click on this, drag out, and we're going to use this break hit result on there. This is getting all the information from objects in front of us, or from what we're hitting as well. So what we need is this hit actor, we drag out of there. And with this, all we need to do is call our blueprint interface. So if we just type in hit, we've got our hit me message so this is calling our, our blueprint interface okay so we just need to say if this branch is true if we are hitting something let's go in and use this uh, call this hit me interface message let's compile and save that okay now just to make this a bit easier to see, let's just drag our copy of our blueprint in there. Make it a bit more obvious what this is, just as a side thing. I'm just going to add a material to this. So click into our content folder, right click new folders, create a materials folder. Let's add a new material. This is called red, see? I'm going to double click on this. Gonna add in a uh, vector three. Let's go in. Give this a color. Okay. A bit pinky, but never mind. Let's just drag this into our base color. There we go. And then uh, let's just save that. Close this one down. Let's just go back into our box move. Let's go back into our viewport and select our cube. And then in our materials, we can just go and add this material to it. Okay, let's compile and save. So hopefully, just check everything, hopefully all this should work. Ah, now we are getting an error, and I think I know what this is, uh, error warning report to show message log, we're getting a loop, and it's to do with this box move and the way we're calling it. Just notice this, let's just go in, um, just shows you the, the debugging does work. Let's go into our box move and let's see what's happening here. Okay, so what we're getting, we're actually calling this hit me here, which is the event that is here. So that's why it's looping around. It's not actually calling the right event. Let's just get this and let's delete it. What we actually need to call is our move box custom event. So let's go in here, let's right click, let's type in move 
box and there we go our call function that's what we need so let's just drag that let's just drag that in okay let's just compile and save to our first person example and fingers crossed let's go in just so we're looking at this let's press f and there we go we are triggering that event off okay so let's do the same thing with a different object so i'm just going to go into my or highlight my blueprints let's add a new blueprint class actor let's call this sphere move double click on this let's do the same kind of thing i'm going to add a component i'm going to add a sphere i'm just going to put that same texture on there we're just going to go into the class settings and we're going to add the interface in so the interact me interface so that's added in now there we go let's go into our event graph so we're going to create a custom event this custom event we'll call move sphere right click and add a timeline let's call this anim sphere i'll keep my naming conventions let's just plug this in okay let's double click on this and add our animation so let's add a vector track i do the same thing so shift click let's create two keys just change this animation up um, so the first one will set at zero value of zero the second one will set a value of 10 and let's set this to a value of let's have them going up in the air 200 let's look at this let's just control click on this keyframe then right click so an auto and let's put some interpolation on this so we're going to start off quite fast and then slow um, down as it gets to the top of its it's peak, it's apex. Let's call this track sphere lock for our sphere location. Okay. Now let's go into our event graph so we have our sphere lock here. So what we need to do is set the relative location. So set relative. So set relative location for our sphere. Okay, so we're going to drag out from the update. I'm going to drag out from our sphere lock into our new location. Okay. Now we can bring in the hit me event. So let's just double click on this. And this time let's not create a loop. So we'll right click and we're going to call our move sphere. There we go. And let's just add that in there compile and save so let's go back to our level let's bring in our new blueprint in there and again let's just play and hope for the best so come in press f come in press f and it's just triggering off those events okay that's just gonna work until they're finished so that is just using um, blueprint interfaces, going around to work around a few of the glitches in there, and um, just calling custom events from within our class, our blueprint class as well. Hope that's been helpful.